And good morning. Good morning. It is So Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we're back in the same place for two weeks in a row. <laughs> it's going to take me a little while to get used to this and be, I'll be excited about it every single week. Like, we're still here. Anyway, we are back at So Together Tuesday. Today is, well, today is a couple of things. One, it's still part of National Quilting Month. So we're going to talk about some quilting stuff. Before we get into that, we want to remind you that you should enter the National Quilting Month giveaway that we're doing. So we've combined forces with a whole bunch of other vendor partners. We're doing a big giveaway. And if you go to shannonfabrics.com slash blog, you'll be able to enter to win. And that is open until the end of the month. So I think we have about a week and a little bit, a week and a half left, um, that you can enter to win. So it is you know, you get one entry per email. So go ahead and you can sign up. You'll be a part of the newsletter. So that means you get uh, the insider information on when we're doing classes or the Sew Together Tuesdays or events that we're doing, um, as well as entering to win this great giveaway. So um, go over there. You get more information on that. Make sure you enter. Um, was there something else? No? Sound is very soft. Check, no. Let's check your mic. Shannon Fabrics University. Yep. Is that good? Might be a little better. Might be? Okay, let me know if you can hear me now. Okay, we're not supposed to have any tech issues. We don't want tech issues. <laughs> anyway, let me know if you can hear me. Go to the blog, go sign up for the National Quilting Month giveaway. Today is also Shannon Fabrics anniversary. So if I counted the years right, we turned 28 today. So if you think that, you know, Shannon Fabrics hasn't been around long, Oh, we've been around for a long time making all this cuddle minky fabric. So, um, but we've only been doing Sew Together Tuesday now. This is our fourth year, which is pretty exciting. And um, we are, you know, is there still sound issues? Yeah, hey guys, give me just okay. a second. I'm going to turn uh, this off and turn it back on again, and we'll see what happens. Because, you know, it's what we do. I can just sign for now. All of the deaf people out there. <laughs> We're trying to do closed captions, so. Okay. Okay. Try that. I'm going to try talking now. And I'm not mic'd right now because we have a special guest who has my mic. Right. So I'm speaking up right now, but mostly you're just <laughs> trying to see my talk. So let us know if you can hear us. Okay, we'll see if we can get it figured out. I think everybody says we're good now. Oh, good. Just needed a fresh restart. Yeah, I think you know what happened. Oh, we, we, I, I left, I left the room, and then it has a hard time reconnecting sometimes. So anyway, we're back. It's National Quilting Month. Go to the blog, sign up, all that good stuff. It's also Shannon Fabrics' birthday anniversary, um, and it's National Quilting Month in general. So today we're talking about long arming and binding. So really, we're talking about three ways that you can bind your cotton quilt that's backed with cuddle with Minky. So we have three ways of doing that plus a little bonus way. But before we get started with that, I really want to bring on a special guest. So we have Patty Meyer with us. So you can come on in. Hang so on, this, hang on. Why no? you share the video? Oh, I forgot. Oh, I remembered last week and then I forgot. Sorry. Come on in. Um, so <laughs> yes, share the video. Tell all your friends. Share it in your favorite sewing groups, all that sort of stuff. And you'll be entered to win a kit. So at the end of the show, we'll draw Two winners, one from Facebook, one from YouTube, and you'll be entered to win a kit with the Sew Together Tuesday tote bag and mug. So we're going to give these away until they're gone um, so that you can you can get the, you know, the tchotchkes from us. Okay? So it'll be super fun. So share the video. We'll choose a winner at the end. All right. So now, Patty. Hello. All right. So come on over here so we can get the <laughs> light out of your face here. Um, Great. All right, so this is Patty. You're the owner of Casey Maker, and we actually had uh, the show at her shop in August, I think, of 21. That's right. Yeah, it was a yeah. while ago. It was a while ago, and so she happens to be my local quilt shop. She's also a long armor, and I've had her long, long arm a couple of things for me. So when people started messaging me and asking me, so what do we do to prep the quilt for long arming, and how do we deal with this, and what do we do about that, I was like, okay, I can get the answers and then regurgitate them, or I can just bring on the professional. So that's what I did. <laughs> so I brought on the professional. So I want to talk about what do we do? So if I've made a cotton quilt, mm -hmm. and because I love quilting, mm -hmm. now I want to get it quilted and I want Minky on the back. What do I do? Okay. So a couple things to think about. Um, Minky obviously comes in different widths, right? And so you might have just the 58 inch width, you mm -hmm. might have a 90 inch width, and depending on the size of your quilt, you're going to need to decide if you need to seam it, 
right. um, and how you piece that together. Right. And so um, the important factor to remember is if you are piecing it together, that you need to cut your minky into two pieces. You need to match it up so that the um, nap goes the right direction. Right. Um, otherwise, yes. you'll end up with your quilt at the end, and it'll look like it's two different colors on the back with the nap going opposite yeah. direction. So I was, I was saying this is exactly what happened to me is that I like accidentally put it so that they were going the opposite directions. Mm -hmm. And so when it gets quilted, yeah, they look like they're different colors because mm -hmm. of the way that it is. So make sure that you take care of that. Um, she's right that we do have with cuddle three and ninety wide. And then we have our regular 58, 60 inch regular cuddle. So if you are doing a larger quilt and you need a hundred inches of backing, you're going to get two of those cuddle threes and stick them together and make sure the nap is matching. And then we also have um, Lux Cuddle Mirage 80, which is an 80 inch wide mm -hmm. Lux Cuddle. So, and you can, you could actually like piece any of the other Lux Cuddles too. Mm -hmm. So any of the Lux Cuddles are quiltable. We'll talk a little bit about which ones we like best. So yeah. yeah so once so you've got the backing... And you yes, need to have you're going to seam it with the selvages, right? Yep. Because we want to load it on the um, frame from selvage to selvage. Mm -hmm. That's the least amount of stretch. And so your quilt is going to come out the most square. So that means a long the, armor. the part that goes across here is the cut part. This is the selvage, correct? No. When, when I'm the like rolling it? The selvage you're is gonna the do finished it the edge way? of the fabric. Okay, so you're going to put it on that way. We're okay. going to put it on that way. Interesting. So that selvage doesn't have the stretch in right? it that the sides of the quilt does. Yeah. And so as you pin that to the leaders, you stay straight. Oh, interesting. Where if you pin the side, it stretches. Interesting. Because I've you heard let people go do it that, just the opposite. So that's oh. really interesting. So I think it probably is kind of like what you get well, used to and it, and it might be that yeah. um but what we found is that if that stretches mm -hmm. then you take it off of there and it shrinks back up and your sides of your quilt go in yes and that's the worst and thing so, that happens so no matter which way you load it just make sure that it's not not stretching. stretched yeah you definitely have to make sure it's not stretched yes and then and then from there the next important thing to know is just how big do you make that backing yes um so when you're sending it to a long armor we have to have room to pin it to our leaders mm -hmm. or whatever method we use of attaching it to right. our leaders. Um, and then we want to make sure that we have enough on the sides that the clamps that we put to keep it pulled mm -hmm. taut um, don't get hit by the machine when the machine comes to the edge. Got it. So there is about a four to five inch leeway there from the edge of your top to the edge of your backing okay. that's needed for that space. Um, okay. So we always recommend a minimum of four inches, mm -hmm. five inches. We absolutely love. And so that would be five inches all the way around. Got it. That okay. Because us... you want to be able to pin it up here, clip it down the sides, and then it will have to and get pin across, across, the, across bottom the bottom too. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. So if I have my quilt top and say I'm doing uh, like a full size, so I've got an 80 inch mm -hmm. quilt top, do I send you batting too? Um, so that just depends on your local long armor okay, and what so their a... preference is we actually carry it on the roll so that we can cut off exactly how much somebody needs. Got it. Um, and that's usually more economical than mm -hmm. package batting. It also hasn't been folded as many times as a package batting. Right. And right. those folds yeah. create stretch marks in the batting where you can get thinner spots in it. So totally. I've seen that happen. Yeah. Got it. So, so I would, I, so I'd have my 80 inch, if I have 80 inch square quilt, I'm going to have you take care of the batting. You'll mm -hmm. charge me for that. And then I would need to send you backing that was at least 90 wide correct right so if i'm doing a if i'm doing a quilt that's wider than 80 inches i can't use the 90 wide i would need to piece it you would okay yeah. um do you care if that piecing goes right down the middle or should it get so shoved to one side one of or the reasons one of the reasons we like to sew it selvage to selvage and mm -hmm. pin it selvage to selvage mm -hmm. is it that it creates that seam that goes um right across the bar mm -hmm. if you pin it the other way then you're going to have that seam come down the middle. And as you roll your quilt, that bulk is going to get bulkier and bulkier in one spot. And the rest of the quilt is going to be hanging limp. That so, makes a lot of sense. So we always want to try to get that horizontal to the bar of the long arm. Got it. Because then it's only in one moment that it's thicker right yeah. there. Um, and so when I've done mine, I've sent it when I've, I've just sewn the selvages together and then I left the selvage on. Does mm -hmm. that matter? Is that nope. fine? It doesn't matter. Um, we generally will trim it off. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is that it just relaxes it. Got um, it. Now we keep the ends that we pin, mm -hmm. but the selvage down the middle that you've seamed, we want to trim that. Go and trim that's it. true on even a cotton. Oh, okay. Um, because as it's washed, mm -hmm. selvages can shrink up more. Right. And can cause puckering across that seam. Oh. 
And so if you trim that off, um, and it just has to be a little bit trimmed off just mm -hmm. so that that finished edge is gone. Got um, it. And then that allows that to relax the fabric. Totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. Totally makes sense. Okay. So you brought a sample for us. Today. I brought a sample for you so that you can see just how those layers go together. Got it. And so when we're putting this on, this would be up at the bar and we'd be pinning that in place. We have our top of our quilt and I didn't put a very good color there. Doesn't show up so well, but the edge of our quilt, we bring the batting all the way over kind of to the edge of our okay. um, backing. So you can see the backing there. And then we're going to generally on an edge to edge quilt right off of the edge mm -hmm. of the fabric right. so that we cover every bit of it. And that then any um, ends of your stitching mm -hmm. is going to be encased in and your binding. Yep. And I know that's what you're going to talk about yep. today, right? Binding. Yep. Exactly. So that ensures that none of those then come undone. Exactly. Um, so when I get it back from the quilter, and I know because I've done this a few times that I send them because I don't long arm. <laughs> um, but when I give them back, this is still on here. So you guys, like, can can someone have you trim it? or They you... can. They okay. can. And, you know, we have huge cutting mats. Mm -hmm. So it's easier a lot of times for us to trim it and get right. a good square line than Got for it. the customer to do it at home. But some of them have amazing sewing rooms. Right, so, right. Exactly. Uh, you know, if they can do it themselves, that's great. So that's something they but... can talk to the long armor beforehand yes. and say... Yeah, and they could ask about the batting. You can ask about the trimming. And I know I have a, mm -hmm. a long armor in Portland that I've used that will actually do binding for you too. Right. So. Yeah, and we do that as well. <laughs> yeah. So, so you never um, know. Like long armors will do a lot of things for you. Um, but really, backing it with cuddle is kind of the best thing. We'll so do that. when you have you, you're about to talk about different ways of binding mm -hmm. this quilt. Yes. And each of them have different requirements for the batting and the backing and the way they get cut after yes. this stage, right? Yes. So that's a, also a good conversation to have with your long armor. <laughs> yes, on what you want to do with it. So if you want to do any of the cuddle bindings, you won't want them to trim it. Right. So that is something. But yes, it's good to know what the long armor is capable of doing. Um, and it, there's just a variety. So make mm -hmm. sure that you talk to the long armor first. So have at least five inches all the way around, mm -hmm. okay? You, most of the time, the long armor can provide the batting. I've always had that correct, that situation. Mm -hmm. um, do long armors, if somebody wanted to send you a quilt or other another long armor, do a lot of long armors carry the fabric? So I would just send you the quilt top and say, this is what I want. That's possible, yeah. And okay. we have customers who mail theirs into us. Mm -hmm. They'll look at our website and look at our selection of wide backs and they'll mm -hmm. say, oh, I want this back backing got it or I want this cuddle to go on the back and we'll mm -hmm. seam it for them and everything so, very nice um that's all possible cool and it all just depends on your yeah. long armor whether they carry inventory or not right and I feel like that's the that's the part like for me I love I love quilt making I love the piecing mm -hmm. but I don't really like the long arming so for me it's really nice it's to make so that fun. quilt top I know. <laughs> see we can all like different things it's great <laughs> I'll let you long arm it yeah. I'll piece it works out great <laughs> well we've got Patty here we have a question um is there do you use a different needle on your long arm machine when you're using a cuddle backing? We do not. Now we use a fresh needle with every single quilt. And so we know we have a good sharp needle that's going to go through. Um, mm -hmm. And with the long arm needles, they're strong enough to go through um, the thicker of the minky and, right. and cuddles. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's the standard answer that I've heard too, is that they don't use mm -hmm. any sort of a different needle. Use just the standard yeah. long arm quilting needle, because mm -hmm. those are different than your domestic machine needles. Right. Those are specifically made for long arms. Yeah. And you don't have yeah. any problems with skip stitches or anything like that. Not at all. Got... They actually just quilt up beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, it's yeah. rare we have any issue. You can use a ballpoint needle. Mm -hmm. A ballpoint needle just ensures that it goes through a knit. And so right. technically a cuddle is a knit mm -hmm. um, fabric. And yeah. so you can use a ballpoint. But you've never had to do that. But we have never had to yeah. do that. We haven't had yeah. any issues. And with so, them. yeah, so recently she quilted um, this for me. So I'm going to show you this guy, this, this one right here. Because I think this is, this is a great example because this is actually cuddle to cuddle. It is. And she still was able to use the regular needle. And I think it's just because they use a different needle on that machine that works, yeah, better differently. So this one is actually Lux cuddle on the one side and then a C3 on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I wanted her to do this for a couple of reasons. But one of it really is just to show the difference in what the quilting looks like when you do it on the different things. So a lot mm -hmm. of times people think you can't long arm with a Lux cuddle. You totally can. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the totally pattern can. is definitely more hidden yes. on the Lux Cuddle than yes. on the, the C3. But for me, this is this is a reason why, like, so I have another sample to show you guys. So 
Um, if you've watched it together for Tuesday for very long, you know that Hawk is an artist and I like to say I'm a crafter, I'm a maker. I, he, yeah, we'll, we'll have arguments about it <laughs> we're forever. Gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna talk. <laughs> but when I long armed, I did little pebbles on a, um, just, it's a cotton quilt. I clearly never bound it. Um, and my pebbling is not great at all. Like this is seriously like the second thing I ever put underneath the long arm. Not great, but look at how great it looks from the back. Mm -hmm. So if you are new to long arming, using a Lux cuddle on the back, because it hides the design. It's very forgiving. Nobody will see it if it's not perfect. But then you can be like Hawk and be a really great um, artist and you can free motion this. He did this? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It was like the second thing he quilted. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> because he just traced out this cave fabric. I echo quilted the cave and then yeah. just kind of did some 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 makeup things that I would never be able to think of. Right. And this is on here. So the thing that I, I love this sample one because that quilting is amazing, but you can see how heavily quilted it is, and it's still super, super scrunchish. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's what I love because when you're quilting with cotton, which is what this one is, you can see it doesn't it doesn't squish up quite as much. It's mm -hmm. not quite as soft. No. Can and the more the you, yeah. No, oh, this is just sorry. cotton on oh, both it's sides. Cotton on both sides. It's cotton Got on it. both sides. Yep. Standard sandwich. S standard, right, exactly. Right. And it's not quite as. Yeah, so. um, just getting blown out because the, the the color, color is so bright yeah. yeah um but it's just it's just uh not as yeah it's not gonna catch mm -hmm. it it's just not as soft as the cuddle ones are the cuddle ones just stay super scrunchious which i love so for me that's a big reason yeah. to quilt with cuddle on the back of it they're, they're just soft in the beginning you don't need to wash it six times to get it to soften up a little bit so it really does depend on what you want so these are free motioned this one is a pantograph, an edge to edge, mm -hmm. right? Is there another word that we call it? Nope, just an edge to edge, okay. digital pantograph. Um, something else we didn't talk about, but this one was quilted with no batting. With no batting in it. And yes. so cuddle to cuddle, you can get a wonderful feel with no batting, mm -hmm. and it um, is especially if you do the Lux cuddle on the one side. Yeah, the um, weight of it is such a perfect weight. I was, yeah, when I brought it back, I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it can get heavy really fast, mm -hmm. depending on the batting used in it. Mm -hmm. um, I actually but no like batting use, is great. No batting is great. Yeah, um, and that would be for a cuddle to cuddle. I will say always with a cotton quilt, I always recommend that you use yes. a batting. If you have a cotton top, use a batting and then the backing. And that's for a few different reasons, but it does it definitely will wear better because the cotton mm -hmm. and the cuddle won't wear the same. And that batting gives it some extra like stability, I guess. Yes, yes. And yeah. it gives it some movement so that if, you know, our piecing is not all perfect right and so if yeah. if there's any movement in your blocks then it gives it a place for that to go that fills in the gap that makes sense and yep. so it it provides that kind of cushion for it and so, yeah so one of the things i love with the cuddle layers mm -hmm. is also wool batting yeah um, people think wool is hot mm -hmm. it's actually the most breathable yes. of battings and so it's a little puffy mm -hmm. but it's really lightweight yes. and breathable so you don't get too heavy um, too quickly exactly with that's, the cuddle to cuddle. That's actually what this one is. Let me oh. let me pull this one over real quick. So we have a few samples to show. This is one I had kind of hidden away. But yeah, this one is. Um, oh yeah, that feels so wonderful. It, yeah, it has a little mm -hmm. bit extra puff. It is. It's very breathable yes. and really nice. Yeah. So yeah, I like this one. I like this one a lot. We'll talk about this one a little bit more later. Okay. Cute quilting yeah. on it too. Thank you. Um, that one was done by um, a lady called. Um, her name is Julianne. Her name, uh, Quilting nerd is her business, and so she quilted okay. out for me. So yeah, I've tried to like I have long armors around the country. <laughs> I'm like, do you want to quilt this for me? How about this? Will you do that? When you travel, <laughs> <laughs> it worked out really well. And it's also really interesting for me to talk to different long armors and see how they deal with it, mm -hmm. what they do a little bit differently. And because I really don't love the long arming process, then um, it's nice to be able to kind of get some more feedback. And when I do it myself or when I did some domestic quilting, um, I have some more insight on that. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions we need to answer about it? Um, you mentioned that, that wool batting is great. You usually use an 80-20. Uh, an mm -hmm. Yep, I use a blend uh, usually. Is there, any, is there any other reason to pick a different batting, especially if you were thinking about a baby quilt? With a cotton front, cuddle back, what batting might you suggest for a baby quilt? I personally would still use a wool or an 80-20 yeah, um, blend. Mm -hmm. um, you can always go with 100% cotton. 
Um, they get heavy. They get That's the thing heavy. About cotton ones. Yeah. They get heavy. And yeah. And the 80, 20, I always say it's an 80, 20 blend, but it's 80% cotton, 20% poly. Is mm -hmm. that what it is? That's correct. Okay. And it, they don't shrink as much, which is partly why I like them. And they're also just really soft. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's very easy to find. So most, yeah. um, most quilters will have it. Long armors will have it. I've also had it done with bamboo, which is lovely, but definitely more expensive. So there's yeah. a wide variety of types of batting. So those are questions that you definitely should talk to your long armor about is, you know, those questions about look, which battings do you have, which ones would you recommend for this? They'll have their own insight and their own experience mm -hmm. on working with it and whether they want to do that, you know, or not. Okay. One, one more sort of general question. We're always, we're always still using polyester thread. Yeah. Correct? Do you quilt with poly? Yeah, we quilt with polyester thread. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty standard. Yeah. Um, yeah. It used to be match your thread to your fiber. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a cotton quilt, you'd use cotton thread. Right. And that has kind of myth has been blown away in the last few years. Yeah. And um, the polyester threads are just so much more durable and stronger. Right. And you get a really nice look with less thread breakage than yep. you would with a cotton thread. Right. And so, yeah, and in all these places, and especially on something like this, where we're still actually going to have some stretch in here mm -hmm. because of the cuddle, you really do want those stronger threads. So it's the same reason that we always suggest using polyester thread when you're sewing cuddle together is because it has some stretch and some strength to it that mm -hmm. cotton doesn't. Right. So it's just a different kind of thread. Um, we will be including a bunch of the tips that Patty has shared today in the um, notes, the show notes that we'll put up tomorrow. So we'll do that after the show. I'll put some more of this stuff in there. So you can reference back to that. You can always come back to the video and watch again too. Um, Where otherwise, are the show, show notes going to be? They will. I will post them. They will get onto the blog, and then I will post <laughs> a link on Facebook. So you can always go back to the blog post for this episode on shannonfabrics.com, and then the show notes will be there Wednesday after the show. Okay, so we're going to do that every time this time. Um, and so it's a great way to be able to get this information because she just said a lot. Like yeah. there was a lot there. Um, and we want to make sure that you guys are getting that information and able to use it later. So we'll be doing that. All right. Or Is hit that replay. It? Or hit replay. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the actual binding parts of it. So thank you yeah. so much for thank coming. You. I really I appreciate, appreciate it. it. This was great. Anna. Yeah. Thanks, Patty. Hey, can I have your mic? <laughs> we're, we're, one, we're one mic short. We did. We really need a three mic system here, but you know, they only make a two mic system. So Thank we're here. So oh, let much. me give you your little quilting sample back. Thank you very much. All right. So, so once you've gotten your quilt and you've done this whole long arming thing, you get it, get it back. You're going to come, it's going to come back to you. Like you said, with all those edges. And that's really the way I always get mine. I don't have them trim it. I just get it back. Um, and then I decide what I want to do with it. So what we want to talk about today is once you've gotten to this point, now how do you figure out how to bind it? And there are three different ways that we're going to talk about today that I'm going to show you so that you can decide what kind of look you want based on the look of it, but also the fabric that you have and kind of what your skill level is as well. So we're going to start with the easiest one, which is self-binding your cotton quilt, okay? So... I made a few different samples and we used all of um, this one. So I want to show you, see if I can get that to show up a little bit better. It's the Herdy ruler from Latifa Safir. And I used the other side quilt pattern that she had. There it is, the Herdy. And the Herdy is a half rectangled um, triangle is what Ooh, that is. Oh, I dropped Oops. my mic, guys. Sorry, Sorry about that. That was that. probably loud. It probably was. Do you want some help? Yeah. <laughs> we're going to. She's going she's gonna to get my mic back on me. Otherwise, it's going to keep falling and that will be a problem. All right. Okay. So we use the Hurdy, the Hurdy ruler, the half rectangle ruler from, uh, from Latifa Sifir. And then I use the other side quilt pattern of hers and I just kind of shrunk it because I really like it. And then I, but I didn't need to make three full size quilts. So I made three tiny ones. All right. Um, so I just wanted to show you that. So you knew what we were using in case you really do like it. It is awfully cute. It is awfully cute. Okay, so this first one, I did part of it, so don't look at that yet, um, is the this quilt design, and I quilted it, and then I left this border. I wanted to talk to you just a little bit before we get into it about the quilting and the experience that I had here, because one of the things that we hear a lot about quilting with cuddle is that the you could see the um, the the batting or the backing come back up through. Okay. So if you look at this, and I don't know where you're looking right now, but if you look at this white edge, every once in a while, I can see a little pop up. I'm going to see if I can. I don't know there we go. 
Let's see if we can get it. So there are some little bits that pop up here. Oh, the every we once call in a while. it. Some people call it bearding, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Let's see if we can get the light on a little bit. There we go. So there's a little bit right there. There's a little bit right there. Okay, and it just pops through just the tiniest bit. And you you quilted this on your domestic machine. I did. Right? But the interesting thing okay. is that you can't see any of that in here. So there are a couple of things people always ask, how do you prevent this from happening? One of it is don't put a light front with a dark back. So this is the Lux Cuddle Galaxy Mallard um, back there. So it's very dark compared to the white that's up here. So it's popping through on the white. On all of the color sections, you can't see it at all. So even here where it's a lighter one, I still can't see it at all. Okay, so that's a big thing to keep in mind that when you're quilting it, it could be a problem. So what I did is I just switched my thread and I made it match the backing. So the thread color pops up a bunch more. It's and... got like a lot more contrast to the, the stitching mm -hmm. and you have to be a little bit more careful about what you're doing. But even if it's way, bearding, I can't see it. you're not gonna see the bearding that way. Got it. I can't so see it at all. You coordinate your top stitch to your back. That's what I did. So the other thing is, is to just not have a bunch of white on your quilt. Um, but I <laughs> kind of did this specifically so you could see what that is because there isn't really a way to completely prevent it. The other thing you can do is literally go back here and scratch out all of these stitches. Well, I mean, I but really love what, this part of the process, but that seems a little It extra. seems a little obnoxious. <laughs> Plus what it does is takes out any of that design. So if you don't want it to look like there's any quilting on the back, you can totally make it look like there is no quilting on the back. Okay, so this was like totally, but there is a stitch that goes right through there and you can just hide it. But really what I want is I want the quilting to show. I like the quilting. So that seems obnoxious. Got it. Okay, but I wanted to talk about that first before we got into it because it's always a question with the quilting. So there's a couple things you can do. Really, the biggest thing is just breathe. Okay? There we go. That's <laughs> the answer. All right. Is it so, soft? Is it soft? It still is soft. Okay, so what we want to do, if we're going to self-bind this quilt, we're going to do it with a one-inch seam binding. You can do it from a half an inch to three inches, but we're going to show you today how to do it with an inch binding, okay? The first thing I want to do is I want to mark my finish where I want the, uh, the self-binding to end, so where I want the binding to finish on the front. I'm going to mark that first. I'm going to mark it with a, this is an um, air erasable, I believe, air erasable marker. Let's see if it'll, it'll show on there. We'll give it a shot. With cotton quilting, you have a quarter inch seam allowance. So the first thing I need to do is kind of mark where my quarter inch is gonna be so that I can try to get it to match. So even if it's not exactly a quarter of an inch, like mine ends up being a little short right there because Wait, I'm not a perfect quilter. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw a line here. Oh, I can barely see that. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna grab another. I grab another pen real quick. Hold on right there. And okay. wait. <laughs> so I've got, sorry. I love having a sewing room next to the studio though, it's because great. you have access to all of remember the when tools. I, remember when I have to run all the way downstairs to go get it? <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> now it's just right next door. So I have two markers here. So my air erasable, I was like, oh no, I think this is kind of old. So that's why that didn't work. I have a friction pen, a fine liner. I'm not going to use this because it's on the front of my quilt. And in case it didn't come out, I would totally see it. And that would make me very sad and sort of a little heartbroken. Okay. So I only use these friction markers where I am going to be able to hide it. Okay. And not see it. Okay. So this one is my old taped up uh, water soluble marker from Clover. Let's see. This is what I used the other day and it worked. So let's give it another shot. Okay, so again, I'm going to mark, I'm really, I'm not measuring a quarter of an inch, I'm measuring against the corner of my quilt block there. There we go. So this will come out just with water. And my binding is kind of this color anyway. So you might get away with it. I a might be able more. to get away with it, even if it shows just it. a little. Okay. Some folks in the, uh, in the comments seem to be pretty impressed by your points. Okay, good. Because, <laughs> I'm yeah, not super impressed yeah, with not, that. But... <laughs> not bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a quilter. It's what I do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to mark this edge too, the same way. So right now I'm marking where I want my edge to finish. 
Okay. So we're bringing this mallard, the galaxy mallard, around to the front of the quilt, and this line is where the raw edge where is it will come land. and finish, right? Got so it. you can see that this is not even with this, but this is one of the things that I like about this technique that I'm like. Ooh, my seam allowance was a little bigger there and it's a little tiny here, but you know what? We're going to make this work just fine because I'm going to measure from this line now. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark three quarters of an inch up from the raw edge, I just realized. So we want to do one inch. This is really kind of the easier one is to do one inch from that line that you just drew. But that's probably better. It kind of keeps everything square. Exactly. To, the, it won't to your be, finish. Got it. Won't be perfect. So, so then this, I want to. This line first, then this line, this line is one inch one from inch that from line, here. and you're, you're, you're drawing the line you're going to cut the batting on. Yes. Okay. So then I'm just going to make sure that this is basically a square here so that my the corner of my quilt is a square because that's really important. Okay. And then go ahead and measure up that just a little bit. Okay. And again, just one inch from that edge. All right, I'm gonna measure it all the way up so I just cut it off. Having things underneath it doesn't make for easy or accurate measuring. Okay, so this is another part that I got a little close right here because I didn't quite trim it right, but this is gonna come over and it's all gonna get caught underneath there and it'll be fine. Got it. I'm having some I'm having some fun with my camera work too because we have a new studio. Thanks to everybody. And it's got tons of lights in the ceiling that I am ducking and dodging <laughs> around. See that one? Isn't that fun? Doesn't that make it easier for everybody to see what's going on? No. How about <laughs> let's do that? <laughs> Stay over here. So I'm using my big old Kai scissors because I love them. Okay. You can, the, I will tell are you. Those big guys micro serrated? Yes, they are. I heard mm -hmm. that. I heard the way it was cutting. They are. They are. See, micro serration. I right see there. it. Yep. Those are awesome. Okay. They're great. You can also do this where you kind of bend the backing and then you could cut along this line with a rotary cutter. I am too scared to do that. I've done it. I will say I've done it, but I've also nicked my fabric underneath and that's super terrible. So if I use scissors, it's a little easier to not catch the fabric underneath. Okay. All right, so now I've got my batting. I've trimmed that away. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark one inch past this because I want this one inch to come over and one inch will finish there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark again. I'm not even gonna mark, I'm just gonna rotary cut. She's gonna, gonna make a mess. I am. <laughs> try to come in here from a very weird angle. Okay. Actually, you know what? I was gonna show something on the other one. I'm gonna do it with this with this side. I'm gonna show you two different ways. So I'm gonna rotary cut that side and blade this one. Okay. And that's so you can see how the different sides finish. Right? Wrong one. Is everybody like, don't cut there? Okay. <laughs> one inch past the batting. Oh, yeah. I'm ducking and dodging glares like crazy. Right now. Yeah, it's because the yep. ruler. Sorry. Yep. It's okay. Okay. So then I can go ahead and cut this with the blade. Your trusty Ulfa SAC-1. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I'm just going to drag this right along here. Like I need a snap on my blade. I don't have a tool. That's all right. We'll get through it. Okay. okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to take that off because I didn't measure all the way up. And we just need this corner, basically. Okay. Demonstration quilt. Yep, this is exactly what it is. I have a few of these things that are really not finished the way they should be, but you know what? They're good to show. Okay, so now I've got a mess. You can see just right here the difference between cutting it with the rotary cutter, cutting it with the blade. Vastly different. I'm going to do a very quick little vacuum here. Okay, I'm okay? going to mute us. I'm going to mute everybody. Three, okay. two, one. And we're back. 
All right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. So now we're just going to deal with this corner. I'm going to cut this batting off. So it's not so obnoxious there. All right. Now you're going to have trimmed your whole quilt like this. So one quarter of an inch in. So basically where we want it to finish an inch from there and an inch past that. If I show you this, this is how it's going to work. All right. And this is the fun trick with cuddle. You're going to top stitch that and it's going to be raw edge. Exactly. So the first thing I need to do, I'm going to trim that corner up so it's a little squarer. And the first thing I need to do is I need to make, before I can do the corners, is I need to make myself a little template. So we're going to do one inch corner. All right. The show notes will give you a thing that you can see how to do this. Um, it'll just be there for you. But I'm going to show you how to yourself. So I'm gonna take a measure one inch. This is just a piece of poster board? Yeah, just an obnoxiously colored piece of paper. It's loud. I give these away in classes. So if you weren't in any of my classes last year, you might've gotten one this color. And I do it so you can't lose it. Okay, because it's really easy to lose. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a triangle up here that will be a one inch corner. So I lay my ruler down, create sort of a triangle over here. Okay, this green part is my little triangle. I knew I need a right triangle, I guess is what that mm -hmm. is. So I'm gonna line up my 45 degree line on one of the lines that I drew and make it intersect at that corner. Okay, so this line is following the line that I just drew. That's my 45 degree drawn on my ruler and also on the paper underneath. I'm gonna have to go ahead. Marion Phillips says she still has her, her SBB. Template yes. from class. Yes. Nice. It's very helpful. Because then, go ahead. Shh. Nobody saw that. It was fine. She okay. did not just cut paper with a rotary cutter. It, it didn't happen. <laughs> I actually have rotary cutters over there that are specifically marked. Okay, so this is the other thing that I'll do. It's all SBB right on there. One inch. Gosh, I'm, my light's blowing it out. There we go. You can okay. read that. Good. So I'll write it on there so I can remember what it is later when I find it and I'm like, what the heck is that little triangle? It's this. All right, so now I go up here and I put that on here. And the way that this should fit in there is it should intersect right there with the corner. Of your bedding. Which it did. Got yep. it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw that line. Okay, there is my corner. So that is my sewing line. That's the first thing I'm gonna do is sew that. So if you're doing your whole quilt like this, you're gonna go ahead and mark all four corners like this and then we're gonna take it to the sewing machine. All right, so let's do that. All right, get a couple of pins. And the way this works is very much like you would for a self-binding blanket otherwise, okay? And, um, sorry. Nope. <laughs> Are we blown out here? Yep, there we go. Um, so it's very much like you would do for a self-binding like it otherwise. And so if you've done that, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. There is a tutorial as well for doing a self-binding uh, cotton top self-binding blanket. So you can get more information there too. So we have a couple other tutorials that you could watch. It'll go through this slower, more methodically. But I'm gonna mark each side or pin each side of my stitching line and I'm gonna sew right there. I always start from the cut edge and end at the fold. All right, and that's so that if it shifts a little, it shifts at the fold and not the not the edge up there. All right, so let's go over here, make sure my machine is set up. I've got it in uh, straight stitch, 3.5 stitch length. Hang on. Okay. See if I can get rid of this light. There, there we, we go. go. So it's just a straight stitch. Like I said, 3.5 stitch length. I actually have matching thread today. What? Yep, because that seems to work better for this project. So I actually did. And it's also the thread that I used here. So this is the thread I quilted with. I'm going to use it to do all the top stitching. Because, you know, if you're going to switch your thread around, you might as well leave it there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to backstitch. Start in just a quarter of an inch, maybe. Back stitch. Make sure I'm not going to hit any of my pins. Get to the edge, back stitch again, and then I'm going to cut my thread. Okay. All right, take my pins out as I try to do things that were going to let me leave my pins in as long as possible. 
So that's why I pin on either side there and trim my thread. Make sure that's all right. And then I'm just going to chop this off. Okay. So I chop it off at a little, little less than a half an inch and uh, just enough. Don't cut it too short because then it will start to roll and be weird, but this should work out totally fine. Okay. So now we're going to go and I'm just going to take this and flip it. And there's your miter. And there's my perfect little miter. Go ahead and use my little point turner, get it to come on out. All right, so come on over here. And now this is going to come down and I'm going to make it match right along that line. I'm actually going to pin because I'm right handed. I always want to kind of pin further away from me so that I can actually in this direction because I'm going to sew here and I want the pins to come out as I sew. So I'm just literally taking this and lining it up along that edge. I'm just going to make sure that that matches. And as I go, I'm going to kind of do a little double check and watch it. Okay. Sorry about that. Do the same thing here. And because we measured from that line, we get a perfectly even binding and make sure that those seam allowances are perfect on my cotton. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin this and now I'm going to sew it. So if you were doing this on your whole one, you're just going to, you're going to pin the whole thing around or at least one side at a time and pin your corners for sure. So on a larger quilt, I'll pin the corners, I'll pin a side and sew it. Then I go and I pin the other side and sew it. I don't like having so many pins around a project this small. Obviously I could pin the whole thing and it'd be fine, but we're just going to do a little part. Because this is binding and we're not just creating a seam. You're not actually, there's no real way to double pin under these circumstances. Oh, you there. totally can. This is just a small enough one that I don't really need to. So I could go over here like this. Okay. And I could double pin. Or part of it too is this tends not to fall off quite as much once I pull it over. And part of that is because it has the batting underneath it that it folds over the batting. And it's not like trying to just loose and flippy. I don't know. It's different. Um, loose and flippy. Loose and flippy. That's but not quite as squirrely. Not quite as squirrely as it usually <laughs> is. Exactly. Okay. So the other thing you could do is just put the big jumbo hooks in here. And we'll use these on a another binding in a bit. Okay. So there is you could you could do all all the pinning and clipping you want. All right. I just don't do it all. So on the Lux cuddles, I like to do a zigzag stitch. My zigzag stitch got switched for me. There it is. So we're going to take this to a four and a four. Okay, you can do five and a five, three and a half, three and a half, whatever you want. I just tend to do them squared, basically. And I'm going to line it up so that when my needle comes down, I have to find the right button, sorry. Okay, so <laughs> when my needle is on the left side, that's where I want the edge of my fabric to be. Hey, just real, sec real quick, mm -hmm. the machine. What what's the machine and oh. what and did we talk about this? Oh, we didn't. Big so table? yeah, so this is the baby lock chorus, which is kind of the upgrade from the crescendo that I had before. So basically, the same kind of machine, and it comes with this quilting table. Which when we did the unboxing, I was like, oh, I love that thing. I'll use it later. Um, and this is and what it it's is. It's later. It's later, and <laughs> I like it not only for actually like the domestic quilting part of it, but I also like it for this part because that I have this huge table that it can sit out on. So it just it doesn't pull against the needle as much. So I don't really use it for most sewing projects, but for things like this, or if you're doing, even if you're doing like the big throws, anything where you have a lot of weight, having this table on here is better. If you have one where you can sink it into the table, even better. But this is a pretty good start. So I'm very happy with this part of it. Um, does that make sense? Is that yes, all good? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thanks. So where this needle is going to come down is basically where my line is. That's what I want. Okay. So I want it to come down just on that side. And it's going to zig and zag. So I can kind of see this. I'm going to stop. I might pin out. So when my needle comes down, it's lining up with this red line on my foot. So partly what you need to do is to figure out what is working on your machine and what you need to look at. Are we in the weird camera view where it gets like kind of fisheye? Oh, maybe. Just kind of realize look a little, it's a little fisheye. Okay. So I'm just going to plod right along here. Use my stilettos I need it to, just keep it over there. 
Okay, so here's my um, my clip. I will show you already. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I can see that blue line already because my pin has or my clip moved enough. Pins don't move, so pins won't let it shift over, but the clips totally will. So when people ask about clips versus pins, that's really a big reason why. I love the clips, but they don't hold it perfectly. So I tend to rely on pins a lot more. Okay, so I'm gonna come all the way down here to the corner and then we're just gonna pivot. So I try to get to the actual corner. I have the little pivot function on mine. Otherwise you're gonna lift up your foot, twist it and then keep going. Do you ever um, uh, do you ever quilt out to the corner? Um, you can, and on something this small, I wouldn't, because it's too small. But on ones that where we do like a three inch binding, I absolutely would. So like on the self binding, the larger self binding blankets, I absolutely do. And I'll show you with that. I'm just gonna clip the thread. Okay, because then I can come over here, and I could stitch right out here, and I would just switch that to a straight stitch. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, because you were on a zigzag. You wouldn't really want to come out on that miter right. with a zigzag. I'm going to do a little lock stitch. So this is the one thing is that it's really thick right there. So you can't really do much back stitching. So I tend to do a lock stitch on either end, which is, I'll have you come up and show it in just a second. Yeah. This one right here, the little circle, that tends to be the symbol for a lock stitch. Got it. Okay. So it doesn't make a huge difference. When it's a larger one, it will keep it from being floppy. The batting in here also helps to keep from being floppy. Okay. So there we go. Got it. It's a great list. It's a great little finish. Okay. So let me clean up my, my little mess here and reset. I'll put these over in the front. Okay. So you can see it's a, just a nice little finish. Okay. Here's the other, the other corner that I did earlier. Okay, very right. nice. Oh, we were going to talk about, forgot about this. So look right here. This is the edge that I cut with the rotary cutter. Okay, so we've got, I can see a little bit of the backing here. All right, so this is a very neat edge right here. Do, 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 do. This is the edge that was with the blade, and you can see it's furrier. Got it. So w okay. with the blade, you only cut the backing fabric. You didn't really cut much of the the nap, the fibers, right. the flush Right, exactly. Part. So this would be why <clears throat> when I'm doing a self-binding blanket, I tend to want to use a Lux Cuddle and the blade because I can get this to flip up and be really soft along this edge. And on this edge, there's nothing to flip up. Okay. Got it. So that's the difference there. All right. So this is what I kind of want to show you a bunch of today. It's just like what the difference is if you do it this way or if you do it that way so that you know to make that choice the way that you actually want the outcome to be. Because I feel like a lot of times we're like, okay, I just want it to be nice. And we're not really sure exactly what to do. And so that's what the point of this is, is really to show you the differences and what you could do this way or that way and what your results will be. Okay, so that's a self-finding. For me, that's the easiest way to finish a, a quilt the um the one thing is you'll have basting stitches all the way around from when if they long arm it you'll have basting stitches and you'll need to take those out what i have found is that the zigzagging around that edge or a serpentine if you want to do that will totally hold that down and you won't have any issues with it coming out you just need to take out those basting stitches all right so sometimes people get uh, freaked out that we're taking out stitches you could also leave it in there just be lazy Okay, <laughs> so now we're going to bind the quilt with Cuddle. And so we can do it with Cuddle, like Cuddle 3, or we can do it with Lux Cuddle. And those are two totally different finishes. So I'm going to show you how to do both of those, all right? All right, T big technique number two. So that was self-binding where the back comes, I'm just reiterating, where yep. the back comes around to the front and yep. it makes its own binding that way. And then you get and, this lovely finish. And that's, that's the finish. Now mm -hmm. we're going to make, we're going to use Cuddle like a normal strip we're gonna, binding yes strip. and we're gonna, so this is how you would bind it if you got one of the kits so like a, the cuddle kits this is the same binding technique that that is but we do it just slightly differently if we do with a cotton front okay so i quilted it this one i just i just did it on my domestic machine i just did some straight stitch um straight line quilting which is really nice i think um 
it's a little bit boring in cuddle because um cuddle is so pretty you shouldn't mix your colors of cuddle too <laughs> get a little dark fuzz on there is that what's um, going on yeah because i have dark blue too so it's kind of like i need a good lit roller to it um which will happen okay I think, so I this, this is looks great with the straight line quilt. I, th fine. I think it looks lovely i love straight line quilting on quilts i really do um and for a domestic machine, this is kind of the easiest way for me to do it. So this one, we have two different uh, fabrics that we're going to use. We're going to use a Lux Cuddle Weave, and then we're going to use a Cuddle 3. So I used a Cuddle 3 that actually matches with the backing. I just used the same fabric, which you can absolutely do. It's kind of a common thing that people do when they're quilting with cotton. And then I chose, like I said, Lux Cuddle Weave, which is really my favorite Lux Cuddle for binding. I'm going to switch that around so we can see. And I don't know if you can kind of see, but there's a little bit of an edge. This is where the edge comes down, and this is where it comes off. And that's so the nap is running. The nap is running that, that direction. Way. Got okay, it. Okay, so this is something to keep in mind when you're putting the Lux cuddles on is that I want to sew it so that my finish is here. So that the Lux, the downward nap is coming toward the front. All right. I'll show you an example of why in a minute. Because that kind of helps hide the stitches. Mm -hmm. Is that. A little bit, a little bit, it hides the stitches. It also looks nicer. Okay. Okay. So when we want to prep this, we're going to cut our quilt to one half inch from where we want it to finish. Okay. So normally we would cut it a quarter of an inch to do the, uh, a regular binding. Okay. With the other one, you remember we cut it two inches from there for the, for the, self binding. Right. This one, we're going to do it a half an inch because we're going to use a half inch seam allowance. So we're still trying to find out where do we want this to end. And I'm going to mark that. Let's see if I can find my blue pen again. There we go. So and I'm going to go ahead and see if I can kind of mark this. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to see like where did these go and then make the square. Okay, so if it finished here, I'd be really happy. Okay, it would look like it was perfect. And that's what I'm going for, is the look of perfection without trying to be perfect. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead, I'll do a, the peach over here and the peach over here, I mean the blue over here. Okay, so again, just figuring out where I want the binding to end and marking that. And then I'll do the same thing up here and make sure that it's square off this other edge. Okay, so now I'm not really measuring my seam allowance. I'm just making sure that it's gonna be square. Okay, so now from there, I'm going to cut it one half inch. So that way when it ends, it's gonna come back over here. Got it. So oh, where's my lid? There it is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rotary cut this. And we're going to hope I'm right. When you keep all these measurements in your head, sometimes it gets really, it gets a little squirrely. <laughs> okay. All right, and because we use a half inch seam allowance with um, cuddle, that's why we're doing the half inch and not a quarter of an inch or right at the edge. We wanna give ourselves some extra. So right here is a good example of how it actually works. So the quarter inch is where my cotton ends and that uh, the half inch is where my cuddle will be. So if I were doing this normally, I'd actually, yeah, I'd have a quarter of an inch. Oops, I'll do one more twist. Definitely easier to twist the fabric than to twist me. That works okay. out really nice right now because this is already quilted, right? Oftentimes when you are when you're cutting just the cuddle, you try not to move it. Right, that's totally true. Yes, yes, <clears throat> exactly. But I'm moving it around now because it's it's really solid as a as a quilt. Okay. 
normally your quilt's not going to be this small and you can't just shake it off, but <laughs> we can today. And that's very helpful. Um, so you could just, you know, run the vacuum over the edge and get it. So now we've got the two layers of uh, cuddle in the batting are behind. And then we have our cotton. Okay. Again, I'm using a water soluble marker on here. You always want to use something that is going to come out because you don't, don't use your Sharpie here. Okay. We want it to come out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch this. So this is always the, the kind of question is, do I stitch it to the front and bring it to the back, stitch it on the back, and bring it to the front. I prefer to stitch it to the back and bring it around to the front so that I have a little bit more control of it. All right. So that's the way we're going to do this now is we're going to stitch it to the back. Before we get there, though, I feel like I should show you how to cut this stuff, the bat binding. So we're going to move that to the side. So this would be what you could cut binding from. This one is the Snowy Owl, so Lux Cuddle Snowy Owl. When you get a strip in a cuddle strip quilt, for instance, it's going to be like this. Then you're going to mark it and you're going to cut it. So a lot of times when we're doing things, I'm going to cut this with a, I'm going to mark it with my Sharpie. One of the things I will tell you is that if you mark it with your Sharpie and you cut it, you need to cut it on the inside of that edge because the black edge will show if it's a raw edge binding and you get that in there. Does that make sense? Yes. So when it comes around, make sure that you cut that off or use a marker that is going to go away. Okay. I'm going to use the black because it's easier to see. And I'm marking this at one and three quarter inches. So here's my one, one and a corner, one and a half, one and three quarter. Okay. So one and three quarters, if I move it this way, you guys will be able to see maybe a little better. Okay. So one and three quarter inches is what this is being marked at. And then I'll go ahead and cut it. So you can cut it. You saw earlier, if you cut it with the blade, it um, is a lot less messy. And once I do that, you can see on this one, the difference in the edge than with the, um, the weave. Okay, I'm gonna pop that blade off because it's driving me crazy. All right, there we go. Fresh blade, fresh, blade. fresh cut. Yeah. Nice. Much better. Okay. <laughs> Much Excuse better. me. So are we, uh, we're not cutting on the bias on this. We're, no. are we, we're cutting with the fabric. We are cutting with the fabric. And the reason we can cut with the fabric is because it's stretchy. Okay. So if we cut it length the fabric, length doesn't stretch. It's not going to go anywhere. So we cut it with the fabric and it still has some stretch to go with us. Do not stretch it though. Because okay. the edges will curl. Yep. We'll show you, <laughs> show you the other one. So once I do this, you can see there's very little mess. Really, and if you vacuum that edge as you cut it, you'll be really pretty good to go. All right. This one is um, a pretty good example because you can see the fluff coming off on both sides. Okay. This one is less so than this side. This means this is my nap going down. So this would be the side I want to sew to the front. This is the side I want to sew to the back. All right. This is not critical. <laughs> it is not the most important thing ever. Once you sort of get into a, a feel, once you've practiced it a few times, you've done it, you're like, oh, I like that better. This is just how I like it better is the nap to come to the front. So I try to note that when I'm cutting it. And then I try to make sure that I've made, <laughs> made sure to check that before I sew it on. Because sometimes I do that and then I sew it on wrong. Yeah. Happens. So. There we go. So we're going to cut that. We're going to use it one and three quarter inches. Okay. The length of so this, the perimeter. That was to talk about this. So this is also one so and three quarters one, inches. Right. But this one is cut with a rotary cutter. Got it. And it's just super sharp edge. Works okay. out great. If you have a fluffy one, this is just a totally different weave is different. Um, and uh, it's also, what's the other name for it? Chenille. Chenille. Lux Cuddle Chenille is basically the same thing. I'll show you um, in just a second. But this one is kind of a denser weave, and so it doesn't do the fluff. It just, it doesn't. And I really kind of like it because it's fluffy still in the, in the binding without being messier or, you know, too, so much fluff coming over. Well, I'll show you. There's so many examples I want to show you. I'll show you one minute. Okay. The one thing I do want to show you here, too, is if I'm going to cut this with my, the Cuddle 3, I'm just going to go ahead and 
cut it. If I'm doing a long strip, I will definitely mark this first because it's really easy to have your ruler slip. So if I start to cut and it does this, it's a problem. Okay, so generally speaking, I will go ahead and I will mark it and then cut it when I'm doing my binding strips because the binding strips are long. I will also suggest that you cut it with the rotary cutter if you're going to do that instead of scissors because scissors are much harder to get a really straight line because as soon as I get off, okay. so this I can see it's not perfectly straight. I get a little wobble in here. Here there's just a little clunk clunk where my scissors did a thing. Okay, that's totally an issue that is super frustrating when I can see this on the edge of my binding. Okay. With the C3 in particular, that is With the much C3. more visible. Right. Got so, it. so generally, I'm like, you know, scissors are fine. Use the scissors. But even with the long scissors, it's an issue. And with the short scissors, it's even harder to get a very long, smooth cut, which is really obvious when you're doing the Cuddle 3 binding. Okay. So it's not that it's hard. It's just these things we have to keep in mind. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that. So now one of the things when people are trying to get rid of the mess, I always suggest use um, the vacuum or you can throw it into the dryer. I don't really suggest the vacuum with this because it likes to suck it in. Um, and then what happens, we were talking about, you alluded to it earlier, is that people will always, often want to pull this and get it off. And as soon as I start doing that, it just starts curling. The edges roll. Okay, so if I and take it and I try to pull this off, it. <laughs> it's just now just a little curly mess okay and that's really frustrating so you can go and you could like low heat iron it and try to get it flat again um, but really this is just going to become a frustration so don't stretch it and that includes when you're sewing it but especially when you're trying to get the nap off just go ahead and throw it into the dryer let it tumble around a little bit give it a good you know few shakes and you'll be okay um, you don't want to stretch it because like I said it's almost impossible to get it back all hey right. Denise, she is absolutely going to get to what, uh, how to, to join the ends of binding strips. I when will. we get to the end, that is a great question and a fun lesson here, okay. and it's coming. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to do a little corner on both of these. I'm going to show you the difference between the cuddle three and the lux cuddle. So I'm going to start with the lux cuddle because let's see, I did that thing that I was like, you have to check it. Okay, so this is the side I want to bring around to the front. It's going to be like this, which means I'm sewing here. Okay, that's how my brain works. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to sew this on. This is my favorite binding and it is the easiest in my opinion. So that's why we're showing that one because if you're going to do a Lux Cuddle binding, I feel like this is the one to start with. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin it up here. To hold it in place, you're always going to leave yourself a tail for that whole turning it thing that we're going to do or connecting it thing. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick a couple of these jumbo wonder clips in here to get that to clip. So one of the things that I do want to check, because sometimes this happens, yeah, is that things will get pushed over. So I'm just going to double check, make sure it's all okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew this. I'm going to start down a little bit. I'm just going to pretend just like if I were going to bind this and connect these, I want to leave a tail. And if I'm doing it for reels, I'm going to leave about an 8 to 10 inch tail. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stick this underneath there. And I'm going to sew this. Technically, it's with a, a no, a half inch seam allowance. So Lux Cuddle Binding is with a half inch seam allowance. My half inch is really the edge of my foot. I always move it closer to 3 eighths. And this is really just because I like to give it a little bit of looseness. So a scant half is good. I'm going to leave this thread in here because it's fine. I'll switch it when we go around to the other side. I want to make sure I've got, why is that not letting me switch? Oh, I see what it's doing. Never mind. It is. Okay. Yeah. So now I've got a straight stitch. All right. Let's catch us back up. Straight stitch. Three quarter or 3.5 millimeter stitch length. And I'm just going to go ahead and stitch this. So when I'm putting these clips on here, I'm not pulling it super tight. So it's going to kind of bulk up a little bit. And I'm just going to move it down. And I'm going to move it over so I can see my edge. Because what I'm looking at is the edge of my fabric and the edge of my binding and making it go basically on the line that I want. So for me, if I'm aiming for this line and it goes over a little bit, I'm okay. 
if I'm aiming for this line and it's, and I, if I was aiming for the half inch and it went over a little bit, my binding is too big. So that's really why I go for the scant is because I can be a little bit too much and it's fine. Because usually what people do is they take too big of a seam allowance and it makes it hard. Okay, so now once I get down here, I'm gonna measure about a half an inch from the end. You put a pin in there to mark. Yep, and I'm just kind of eyeballing that. Because you're at the corner. And then I'm gonna stop. The needle down. And pivot. And then I'm gonna line this little baby up with the line on my, my uh, on the bed here that tells you my center seam. And I'm just gonna make that so right off the end. So that's basically a little mini miter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So look, you can kind of see it a little better with that green thread in there. Oh, that actually okay. really helps. <laughs> so then I'm going to go ahead. So come up above because it'll be easier to see this. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I've, I've sewn it so that it comes here. And I'm going off the edge. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this up so that it comes straight up the side here. All right. So it's coming straight up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold my stiletto here because I love this stiletto for all sorts of reasons. This is one of them. And I can pull it back. Get that nice and even. And then there's a trick right there, right? If you see. Yes. So you, what you want is you want to, I put a pin in here to hold it because I can't, it's too hard to hold that many layers. Um, I want to see this fold. Let's see if I can get in there a little closer. There we go. Okay, I think if we look at from the side, you'll be able to see it better. Back up just a tiny bit. Okay. There we go. Okay, so here's the fold right here on the edge. And here's my raw edge. And that's what I want is I want to see that fold and the raw edge. Okay. If that fold is, is if that fold is sticking out past the You're edge. You're pocket. It doesn't work right. It doesn't work right. You get Got a little it. pocket right up here in the corner and it's not fun. So make sure that you can see the edge of your, the raw edge, the fold. There it is. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick that back on again. I had another one. There it is. I'm going to stick that on again. All right. And then we're going to come back in. Now the part that people tend to mess up is that they want to start sewing over here. I did not pin this so that I should start sewing and come over. I pinned this just to keep it flat. All right. I can't put a clip here because I can't get it under my foot that way. So I'm going to start sewing here at the corner. So the next scene gets start at the corner. I'm going to get it in just a little bit. And then I'm actually going to back stitch just a tiny bit so that I can secure that. And also it's easier to start because there is a lot of bulk right there at the corner. Okay, so I've got the layer of batting, cotton, backing, and two layers, three layers of cuddle. Okay, so it's a bunch. So again, I'm just going to come stitch along here. Again, this isn't moving much. And these jumbo clips, I have to say, I don't remember the student's name, but it was someone in um, Kansas when I was at, I think it was the Quilted Crow. And um, she had these, these jumbo clips. And I was like, that is such a great idea because it holds down such a nice big flat area. And I can just move these along, just kind of let it go, bring it down. You want to make sure that you're letting go completely and sliding it and not kind of dragging this, okay? Because I'm not trying to drag this and stretch it. I'm just trying to move my clip down. All right, does that make sense? Yep. Okay, good. All right, so now you're gonna go around the whole thing like this. I'll show you how to combine the ends in just a minute. But first we're gonna show how to stitch this down. So the corner is basically very much like a cotton binding. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip this. Ta-da. And from the front, <laughs> I'm going to pull this around and we're going to stitch it in place. All right. Got so it. Let's do that. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my clips again. Let's see if I can reach in there. I'm going to put a couple in here. You could use smaller clips for this if you wanted to, but I do feel like these hold much better. And then a lot of times we're going to start at a corner. This time I'm not starting in a corner because I didn't stitch from the corner. So we're just going to try to get this underneath the foot. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing and do a zigzag stitch. Okay. I'm going to show it. All right. Okay, zigzag. So it's 4.4 or a 4.0 and a 4.0. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to line this edge of my binding right up to that blue line that I drew. And again, I'm going to do that thing where I 
Put my needle down. Come on. Oops. No. I can't do it from here without seeing. There we go. Okay. So now when my needle is up in the left position, I want it to come down basically just past that line. And that's what I'm doing is just catching the very edge of my binding. I'm going to use a stiletto. So it's coming just to the, the left stroke of the zigzag is coming just to the inside of the line that you drew and just to the inside of the edge of just the binding the fabric. Outside. Oh, just to the outside. So this is what I would consider the outside of it. Oh, okay. Got it. Sorry. So my stitch is going to come down here. My fabric is going to end here. Got it. So in, into the, here. into the, into the cotton. Into the, into the basic, the part of the quilt, because what I want to do is hide that line. Okay. That I drew because I don't really want to go back and take it out. I can because I use something I can take it out with, but I don't want to. I don't have to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep kind of moving this over. One thing that I've found is, you know, is just being really careful with it and using the stiletto. It's called the precision stiletto from by Annie. And this is the precision part. If you've made any of her bags, you know how important that is to get it really right. So that's what I use it for. And I just kind of hold it in place. Okay, so I'm going to work my way to the corner here. Once I get to the corner, I'm going to take one extra little stitch, and then I do a lock stitch. Oops. Okay, and I'm going to clip my thread. So technically, you could twist here if you want to. I have very poor luck when I do that, so I don't. I just stop, and I retwist, and then usually I keep my little stiletto in there so that I can kind of get there before I put my foot down. Okay. And then I'm going to do a little lock stitch again. Get it all cemented. So that's the one thing is that each time you cut, you have to, you know, secure your stitch again. So that's the only kind of like pain with that one. And if I go ahead and I put these clips in here, it'll kind of hold it in place a little bit so it can't get too far away from me and I'm not having to pull over too much. So sometimes I'll get a little lazy and I forget to put the clips back in, but if I do keep them in there, it helps keep the fabric where I want it to be. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is my half inch, half inch binding. Even with that green thread in there, you can't really see it, which is fine. Oh yeah, let's, um, let's get okay. a little closer. You can, but if you fluff that up, that's yeah, going to go away. Yeah, and if you just used a, you know, a matching thread, you'd be totally fine. Or gray, yellow gray. And then I can go ahead and I can fluff this just the tiniest bit. And it's super easy, but still keeps a really nice sharp edge, which I like. Okay, and I think it looks really, I think it's just a really lovely binding. All right. Like I said, it is, it is my favorite for binding. All right, so then we can do the cuddle three version on the other corner. I'll show you that. On our website, but, do all of the different cuddles have their nap length available? Uh, yes. I think they yeah, do. They yeah, do. there was a question from quite a while ago in mm -hmm. the show and uh, I'm just kind of getting to work in it. In, so. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you this. This is the header for the, uh, or this is all the, like the variations that we have for the chenille and the weave. So if your local quilt shop doesn't carry it, you could tell them this is what you want. Uh, and there are quite a few of them that do carry it. So this is um, probably white natural. Yep. So white, natural, navy. It's a real pretty blue. I've used this on quite a few. Um, this is buttercup. And this is the weave. So it has a little bit of white in it. All right. This is um, the weave navy. And also you can see it has a little bit of white in it. Is it white, natural? I'm not sure. Uh, this one would be quartz. Which is kind of a brownie color, like a warm brown. Yeah, it's right? in the neutrals. It's really, okay. it's really nice. Warm and, then there's warm and a, neutral. Then there's a black one. All right, so there are a few variations on this. And generally speaking, one of these is going to work if you want to give it a try. Like I said, it really is my favorite. I love this stuff. All right, so now we're going to do it with the C3. So the C3, I will say, is probably the one that I think is the hardest. So I'll be very honest with you that it is not the one to start with unless you really love it and you're willing to practice. Either way, practice with this one. Try it in um, other, like on other things besides your finished quilt. Give it a shot on some little sandwiches that you make. Practice it a few times and see what you can do. In class, I always tell people, I'm pretty good at binding now, but the reason I am is because I took a 20-inch square and I bound it and then I made it smaller. I cut off the binding and I bound that again. 
and I cut it off and I made it smaller and I bound it again. And I did that and did that and did it like four times. And then I got pretty good at binding because I had done 16 corners. And so I just give it some practice. All right. So we're going to do this the same way. I'm going to find my nap. My nap is going this direction. So I want that to be on my front, which means it's going to curl around this way. So this goes on my back. Okay. So I'm going to flip this over because I actually need to start over there. I wonder if I can get that. I think I might be able to. We'll give it a shot. I see what you're talking about doing. <laughs> you might be able to do it right on here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin it. I'm going to pretend this is the top of my, uh, my tail. Okay, so I always pin that in place to keep it nice and straight. And then I go ahead and I use clips. And then I try to shove it over just a little bit so I can actually see the backing fabric and my binding fabric at the same time. So what happens is a lot of times it wants to kind of come over here and I can't actually see if it matches my backing. So I always try to shove it over just a little so I can see the backing and make sure it's going to match. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go back over, do it again. So we're going to switch it back again to a straight stitch. And this is where things get a, a little trickier, right? With the, with the C3 binding. Yes. Because the straight stitch shows. The straight stitch shows, <laughs> yes. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to leave this color in here just so you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, normally, I would switch this to a white or a light gray so it would hide more. But we're going to leave it in there today so you can see. So I have, again, right sides together, one and three quarter inch binding. I've got it so I can see my backing there. And I'm stitching it with a scant half inch. Okay, so this one, I'm going to keep kind of checking this, making sure it's okay. And this time I'm going to be holding it down over here. So it stays that edge matches. And now it's extra important that I'm doing a little less than three quarters because this is going to want to move on me and I'm going to keep kind of getting it there. But as it kind of shoves, I want to make sure that I have less than three quarters of an inch. Now you can see there's a little, a little bubble here that happened. That happened because I'm not pinning it. It also works just fine in binding. Okay. Normally, if you were seaming two pieces together and it started to grow like that, you'd immediately like, you have to stop, to stop and, and fight it. Right. Right. And in this case, I have never had it become an issue and I've found a lot of things now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and again, stick a little pin in there where I think my half inch is. And I just kind of keep checking that edge, making sure it's where I want it to be. Take my pin out, do a couple of stitches there. And then I'm going to pivot off the end. So right to the corner. And this this technique I do with cotton too. Okay. I do the same thing that we did before. So you're going to come up above if you don't mind, Hawk. Straight down again. There we go. Okay. So we've sewn straight down. And then pink off the corner. Again, we're going to come up. Straight up the side. I'm going to use my little stiletto to hold it in place. Bring it back down. I want these raw edges to match right here. There's two raw edges. I want those to match. And I want that fold, like we were talking about, to be underneath that raw edge. Okay. And again, I'm pinning this just so it will stay where I want it to. Because as soon as I let go of this, it'll, it'll go off. So I have to take care of it somehow. And that's what I do. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put some clips under here. Switch it around do the next side. So again, coming up to the corner, I'm going to start in just a little bit. Oops. Back stitch, a couple stitches, and then go forward and come down this edge. Okay, so this part, you don't have to be too terribly slow. You just want to keep check on here. Okay, this one will be a little, like, it, some sides will be easier than others because they will be um, lengthwise or widthwise, but this is always widthwise. This is lengthwise. So I'm going to go ahead and backstitch here. Oh, you're talking about the direction of the nap. The nap, yeah, Got and it. just the stretch. And because the, str it, the stretch it changes the way it deals with it. Though okay. once, it's once it's quilted like that to cotton, it doesn't really have much stretch at all. Totally true. Totally true. But the, I can but the binding feel it. material still Even does. so, I can feel it feels a little differently when I'm sewing it. So this side felt a little squirrelier, for my favorite <laughs> word, compared to this side, which is sewing down the length. So it, it does actually feel different. Okay. okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to 
flip this around. So we're actually going to back step just a minute here and I'm going to show you how to combine the ends. Okay, so I'm gonna take out some of my stitches here. And you would never typically marry two different fabrics. I would not, but we're gonna do it anyway. And it's probably gonna help because you're gonna be able to really kind of see the difference between the two tails. We very well might I, be able I, to. I'm thinking, I'm thinking ahead and I've seen this lesson before and I think having two different fabrics is gonna help. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay, let's see what happens. All right, so, <laughs> so this is how our tails would be. If we'd sewn on the binding, we're gonna pretend that these are the same fabrics, okay? Because normally they would be. And then you're gonna have a gap. And normally this gap should be about eight inches or so, all right? We might need to do just a little a little video on this by itself sometime. Um, all right, what did I do? There it is. Okay, so normally what I do is I'm gonna have my piece and then I'm gonna get to here and I don't want them to overlap too far so I'll cut the end off and I just have a little bit of overlap. And then I always have a little leftover because you do. If your binding is perfect, you are a much, much better quilter than I am, okay? So I'm gonna lay this one this direction. And some cotton lovers, cotton quilt lovers are gonna be like, oh, I know what she's doing. I'm gonna put a pin here. So this is the one going this direction. It's traveling this way, so I'm gonna put a pin on the further side, okay? Now this one is traveling that direction. So I wanna put a pin on the other side of this. So I'm actually, going to come underneath here and I'm going to stab a pin in here. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this is that I'm just trying to pin the one layer. Okay. This should be about one and three quarters. Yep. It's a little bit less and that's what I want. So this is one and a half inches apart and that's really, it should be one and three quarters. And then I take a little bit in. So that's exactly what happened is it, it ended up at about a one and a half. Okay. So now at this point, I'm going to trim those there. So I'm just going to be brave and just cut it. You can go ahead and mark it, make sure that it's actually straight, because that's always a good idea. Okay, and usually what I try to do is pin it, I mean, cut it one side of the pin, just inside the pin a little bit. All right, so now our two pieces overlap the width of the binding basically okay so this is really important because if you cut them wrong they're going to be exactly the width of the binding apart <laughs> which is not what you want so make sure that when you cut them they're overlapping okay got it so when i have this piece here i want to cut on the far side on the top on the one that's going this way and the one that's going this way i cut on that side Okay. Yep. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So that's really important. Mind, mind the gap. Mind the gap. So now <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to pin these just like we do for the binding pieces, whether they're cotton or cuddle. I try to bend my, bend my fabric so it will play nicely with me. Let me get those corners to match. I'm going to pin in here. And I'm going to take another pin and pin on the other side of where I want to sew. Okay, so I want to sew from this corner to this corner. Now what happens here, and this is just like something I show in classes. Sometimes. Also, I want to check this and make sure that that's going to go down right. Yes. Okay. Um, so one of the things that I found is that when I'm doing this, sorry, there's a lot to deal with here. Okay, so I've got my, my piece coming this way and the piece coming down. They're overlapping there. So I want to sew from here to here. What I have found is that this this part over here is hard for me to figure out where I'm supposed to end, and then I have a hard time eyeballing it. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to stick a pin at the end. So really, what I'm doing is I'm going to start at this corner and I'm going to sew to the pin. Okay, it's just really a way for me to see where I'm going, and then my two pins are there so that I can sew in between them. So I always tell people in the classes that we do when we're doing binding, this is the hardest part because you really have to get your fabric to like play nicely and be flat which it doesn't always want to do. So you just got to kind of manipulate it, fold it, clip it, whatever you need to do to get it to be there. Okay, so now I'm going from that corner to here. If you've got a little laser, 
this makes it really easy because I can see where that's going to match right there at the corner. And I'm going to sew for that. So make sure I'm in a straight stitch. Yes. Okay, I have to get in here for this back stitch. I'm going to back stitch just a couple. Looks like I missed my corner just slightly. That's all right. We'll make it work. Okay. And I'm aiming for this corner right there. So I'm going to put that on my little laser and then just go for it. Okay. Back stitch. Cut. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and check it. It's close enough. It's slightly off right there, but that's the part that's going to get sewn down. This edge looks fine here. So this is the one that's going to be the raw edge against my quilt. So that matches fine. Like I said, this one doesn't match perfectly, but it's going to go right into the seam allowance. So I don't care. All right, now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to check it. So that's what I did first. Check it, make sure it fits. If it doesn't fit, I'm doing it again. If it does fit, I'm just going to trim off my seam allowances and stick this baby back in here. All right, I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to clip this. And then I'm going to sew it. Okay. If it's slightly too big, you can always um, have a tiny little pucker, but it's really good to get it nice and flat. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn that. What was that off? The, the light. Oh, the, the laser. laser. Got it. The laser is off. Got it. And then you're going to open up that seam allowance mm -hmm. right there. So when I get here, I'm just kind of open it up, stop, flatten it out. And then I'm just going to make this match. Okay. I'm going to aim for that one and overlap. Okay. So now we got that all stitched down. It's a lovely little binding. It's kind of hilarious, but it works. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to clip this baby and we're going to, we're going to do this and I'm going to come down into the cuddle three. So as we talked about, this part is actually easy for the most part. Oh, up there on the, the longer With nap. the box cuddle. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to put my needle down, my needle back up here. So then we can see it, get my foot up. And what I want is that needle to come down right on this edge. So again, I'm going to aim for that blue line that's in here. I'm aiming for that, but I want my fabric over the top. And we're back to zigzag. We're back to a zigzag. Okay. So I'm going to put it at a four and a four. And I'm just going to zigzag this down. Okay. And I'm just going to keep an eye on this. With my, my cut edge fluff. Okay. And I can see this, I can see this blue line really well right now. So I'm just going to kind of keep this over. And now I want to show you a couple of things. So this is a zigzag, obviously. We've stuck with the zigzag. All right, but what I really like on this is the serpentine. On the, on the C3 binding, on the, the C3. serpentine is better, looks better, you think, I than think it zigzag. looks better. I like it. So okay. with serpentine, we figured out, you want it to be about a quarter of an inch wide and I think we figured out each of these hoops to be about three quarters. That's what we figured out. It looks nice. But really play with your settings. So this is the um the baby lock and my settings on here the width is four and a half and the length is 1.6. Okay. We're gonna try this one, see what we think. And what I like about this is if you actually do do some practice ones, you will figure out what you like best and you can do that. Okay. So the one thing that I've noticed is that I have to really hold it pretty close to where I'm stitching, let that do its thing, and then hold it again. Okay, so I don't, I don't get too far, like, I don't know, don't get too far away from it. With the Lux Cuddle, I can be a little, a little looser, but this, it wants to move on me a little bit more. Okay, and I'm just trying to get it to come right along that red line there, so it'll barely hit the edge of the raw, the raw edge there. The, the raw edge of the binding. Got it. Okay, so we're going to come down to the corner here. And I'm going to turn this. I'm going to take it out, I mean. So I'm going to do my little lock stitch. 
to take it out and do the next corner because for here I can't really turn this under very easily and get it to look nice. So like I said, it's just not something I tend to do. Okay, so now I have that where I want it to be and I'm gonna clip this so it'll hold it a little easier for me. Let me refold that so I can get that underneath there. Oops, excuse me, I put the needle down and back up again. It always ends on the, the right and I kind of want it Oh, it's in a different stitch right now. That's why. Okay. It's in the serpentine. Mm -hmm. And I want to switch it. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to stick it here where my red line is there. I'm going to go back over here and we're going to switch it. And we're going to play with some things. Okay. okay. So coming over. Okay. So here is my like a blanket stitch. All right. So I like a blanket stitch and we're gonna give it a shot. This blanket stitch is going the wrong direction. So there's this fancy little button that I can hit that it will flip my blanket stitch around. Oh, that? I saw it, little mirror. Okay. okay. Cause I want my blanket to stitch to go onto the binding. All right. So the width I think is fine. Let's do a little bit longer and see what happens. Okay. okay. <laughs> we're just gonna play with that for a second. we like to do different different techniques to show you what works okay so again i'm just going to hold it here i'm aiming for the spot where i can say see, see the needle's going to come down and i want it to come just off the raw edge okay and then i'm going to do one more switch we're just going to stick it back straight to a zig or a straight stitch because people always ask me, can you do a, just a straight stitch on it? A straight 100%. stitch, again, 3.5 stitch length. Yep. And here and we I'm go. Gonna, and I'm going to switch it so that my, I'm basically kept it in the same spot so that this red line is still the edge of my fabric. The red right? line that's on your that's foot. That's on my foot. Got which it. is actually the eighth inch mark is what that is. It's the eighth inch mark is where I'm keeping the edge. All right. And I'm just going to try to stitch as straight as possible. If you have an edge stitch foot, this would be a great place to use it. I have one on here. I let my mom borrow it. So <laughs> I don't and, have mine. And you're not my mom's, getting it back. My mom's loving it. So yeah, <laughs> she can use it. It's all good. And, and just to be clear, to answer a couple of, clear up a couple of things. No, you don't need to roll this edge under again. Yes, the raw totally edge raw. of cuddle will not fray. And once it has been cut, it only sheds that first time, yep. and then it will never shed again. That is not necessarily true for all Minky, but it is definitely true for Shannon Fabrics Cut. True. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and I'll show you the difference. So here is the straight stitch. Okay. Let's get out of your ways a little bit so I can get a little closer. Okay, so here's the straight stitch. It did an okay job, but you can see any wobble that happens, you can see it. So that's really my thing that I don't love about the straight stitch, okay, is because I can see that this isn't perfectly even, which is no big deal, but really for me, I want it to look as perfect as possible. Um, the other thing, I was gonna say something about this. Shoot, I lost it. Oh, <laughs> I know what it was, is the stitch, the, the thread in here is actually- It's still that it's color. It's that bright green. It's that bright green, where'd it go? <laughs> I can't see it. But you can't see it. It's gone. <laughs> So this is the blanket stitch, which I think is nice. This was definitely more time consuming. Okay. And then this is actually my favorite, which is the serpentine. And I really love that. Okay. So, oh, and then here's the zigzag, which I don't like as much too. And the reason I don't like this one as much is because if my zigzags don't stay perfectly even, you can see it. Okay, so I'm always trying to choose something that I can hide something in. The serpentine is a great one for me to be able to hide my stitches in that nobody can tell. Um, this one, you can see the green a lot more because it's stitched right along that edge right. in, the green, um, in the green thread. So if you were to use, do this on the fabric, I would match this, this thread here, I would match it to this. So I would do white here so that this would not be able to be seen. Okay, so, but you can see the difference Okay, with the Lux Cuddle binding, the C3, the C3 binding. binding, the back, the back. Okay, so you'll see all of those stitches a lot more with the C3, the Cuddle 3, than you ever do with the Lux Cuddle. Yep. It just hides 
everything. The Lux Cuddle hides everything. <laughs> All right. So there's our three ways of doing it. And then we have one little bonus thing that I want to show you just the tiniest bit and then we'll draw a winner. Okay. So I have another one because you can, people always ask me, can you bind your cuddle backed quilt with cotton? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay, so here it is a little bitty version. I'm going to show you just the tiniest bit. Okay, I've got some of the fabric. Oh, we didn't talk about the fabric. The fabric is called Sun Showers, and it is from Christina Camelli, who is a fellow Portlander, and uh, it is from Maywood Studios. So that's where the cotton fabric is from. That's who made it. Got it. And it's a whole little collection. You get it in yes. like charm charm packs or something yeah, like that? Yeah, I got or... it in little charm packs. Yep. Got it. So this one is just a cotton binding, same way that you've probably done it if you're a quilter. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch it to the back again and then bring it around to the front. The difference with this one right. is I'm going to shrink that stitch down to a 2.5. And I'm also going to do it at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, with the cotton, I'm just going to kind of hold it in place. The quilt's already basically stabilized. Mm -hmm. The, the cotton sandwich. will, because the cotton isn't a knit, it doesn't want to move as much. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing of sewing off, but a quarter inch from the end. Oh, yeah, so the width of that original fabric was two and a half, and then you folded it yes. in half. Yes, 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 make yes. an Thank inch you. and a quarter. Yes, so this is just a cotton binding. Cut two and a half inches, fold it in half, ironed, pressed. Yeah. Pressed. Not ironed. Pressed. Yeah, pressed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna fold that corner same way I did. So like I said, the other way, I mean, with the cuddle, it really is, if you are familiar with cotton binding, it really isn't um, much different. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stitch along this side a little bit. The quarter inch seam allowance. Not going to stretch my fabric again because this I did cut with the or bias because I always do my cotton bindings bias. Okay, what were you going to ask? Um, the stitch length on the serpentine stitch is very much variable depending on your machine. Yes. Everyone kind of has a different way of handling that. So that's something that you're going to want to try on your specific machine. If it has a serpentine stitch, Give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. See what happens. Pra do practice runs until you like the width and the length. Yep. Exactly. And I really, it is worth taking the time to do a little bit of practice and figuring out what you like and what your stitch length wants to be before you put it on your real quilt. Okay. So again, I just folded this over nice and tight. I'm going to put it at an eighth of an inch again here. So I'm just, just off the edge of it. And then we're going to stitch this down and see what happens on the back. Okay, so I have done this on a couple of quilts. And I will say that this is also, if you are a hand binder, you can actually hand bind this to the front, which I have done. You can also machine stitch down, just like I did. When you hand stitch on the top the top of this binding, you can do, what is it called when you, you basically can't see the stitch at all? Turn, you turn. Uh, it's like a ladder stitch. Or, yeah, I do a ladder stitch. People sometimes will do a whip stitch. Was it something you turn under? A turn under? Oh, you mean like needle turn. Needle turn. That's yeah, what I'm thinking. Where like you could idea. basically mm -hmm. be, you, you could basically do this so that it was completely, you couldn't see the stitch. Yes, exactly. For all of you folks who love to hand stitch stuff. Yes. Yep. Okay. I'm just going to stitch this down. I do. Um, I prefer a machine stitched binding when I'm doing it for a kid because they'll, you know, destroy the thing if they can. Um, <laughs> if I'm doing it for myself, I'll definitely use um, just hand stitch down. Okay. So we can top stitch this down, get a really nice uh, secure binding there. All right, now let's see. Here's where oh, the truth that comes. that corner finishes so nice. Okay, so now here's where my stitch is along there. You can see it just a little bit. Right along, kind of stitched in the ditch. It's a little bit off, but it's so easy to just hide in the cuddle that it doesn't matter. Okay, I can kind of, I can kind of feel it, but it's gone. Yeah, yeah, we'll just, we'll just pretend it never happened. Look, gone. Okay, great. It's perfect, Teresa. <laughs> it looks awfully good from All the right. back anyway. 
Yeah. So you can totally do this. You can actually do it the other direction if you want to and stitch this to the front and bring it around to the back and stitch it down. But then if it's off a little bit, you'll see it in the front. So that was, that's why I do it here because it's easier to hide that goof in the back. If it's not perfect, I can hide it in the back a lot better than I can hide it on the front. So that's really the difference there. Okay, so there's actually four ways that you can bind your quilt. I wanna show you real quick a couple other samples. We talked about this one earlier that I had um, quilted. So this one is a, this was a, is a prime example of not putting a bright on a white front. I don't care, I just can see the stitching more, but I can definitely see all the red in there. If you pull back, you can probably see the design just fine. Yep. So, yeah. so all of and that red the is, red is, popping is from actually the, the, the cuddle nap from the backside. Yes. And yes. There's, is there binding in this or batting in this? Yeah, thing? this is the wool batting that we were talking batting. about. Okay, got yeah. it. Yes. You're really super fluffy. But that's what that is, is because I chose to use a really bright red on the back and then put white on the front. And I actually used a cotton lawn, so it's even thinner. So... It definitely like pop through. I don't really care because I can just see all the little I love you hands and that makes me happy. So it doesn't bother me at all. But I know some people are like, oh, I don't really want it to show. So don't do it that way. Okay, so a solid white is kind of your your worst idea for putting on the front of a quilt if you would do a cuddle back and don't want the nap to show. Okay, so use a print helps immensely. This would be the same backing, bright color, used to print, cannot see it. Okay, this one I did in the stitch in the ditch. All right, and this is just a heavier cotton. This is quilting cotton from Robert Kaufman. Can I see the back? There, that's what that looks like with the C3. And that was literally just stitch in the ditch. I just, yeah. Got it. I just followed the line. But this one is the Lux Frost. So I wanted to show you this oh, because this the is frost so is really beautiful. And the way that it comes over, this is all just zigzag raw edge. Okay, so that is just a zigzag on the raw edge. And then when this comes over, because the nap is flowing this direction, it just it just hides it really nicely. There yep. we go. And this frost is super fun too because it has the backing fabric is a color. And then the nap is the basically just a white or a snow. Yeah, exactly. When, when I you, brought that when one you, too. The, yeah. It just does, it looks like white. This is the one that I used right here. So here, let me back off just a little, see if we can get it to do its thing. There yep. we go. Okay, so when I do it like this, it's white, but then when I bend it, you can see the orange pop through. Oh, yeah. Okay. So all of these work the same way. Here's the pink, and then the pink just kind of pops through. All right. So it's really interesting because from here, it just looks like white. So if I saw this in the store, I might not be as likely to want to bind my quilt with it, but the truth is that it actually is a great binding because it just kind of grabs that orangey color from the back and the color that's in here, that little salmon-y color, I guess. And I really love that. So there's all these different variations that you can choose. So don't be afraid to try something. You can buy just a little bit of fabric, try it on a little sandwich that you've made before you actually bind your real cotton quilt with it. Try some little ones, make some little samples like I did today where I did the little you know, mini, mini quilts. And um, one, it helps you practice your quilting, which you know I need practice with. And two, it lets you bind it in different ways to really see what is the look that you're going for and what do you want it for? So for me, I bind the quilts differently if I'm giving them to a kid or if I'm giving them to my parents or you know if I'm using it as a sample. Like it all depends on what it is and what look you're going for, what feel you want. My personal still, I've been doing this again, is Lux Cuddle Weave. It really is my favorite for binding. I just think it's such a nice finish. So, um, but that's personal favorites. We all have our, our favorites. So um, I think that's all that I had to share with you. That was a we lot of a lessons. Lot. It's a lot. And I really just want you to be able to be armed with the information to make the choice yourself. So you're like, how do I do it? Here's a bunch of different ways. Let's see what you want to do with it. And then you can do it that way. All right. So we should have some winners. Okay, we we'll get go. those. Today's giveaway okay. winner is uh, Don uh, Don Ewan on YouTube and Tammy La uh, Tammy Lawson Hernandez on Facebook. Nice. I All can right. read. <laughs> Thanks, folks. <laughs> well, good. I can't see it that far away, so you have to read for me, and I appreciate it. So, if you will email us at info at shannonfabrics.com, if you're one of those winners, email us. Let us know your mailing address, your phone number, obviously your email, and we will get a kit and 
Sew Together Tuesday tote bag and mug sent out to you as a thank you for watching and sharing Sew Together Tuesday. We'll be back next week again. We're going to be back with a actual like a whole project to do, which is really exciting. We're going to do a little lovey, which has been asked for a few times. So we'll be doing the lovey love from Melly, Melly Sews, Melly and me, Melly and me. And it's the lovey love. We will have a coupon code for you. So we'll be posting that, I think, probably before the show starts. You guys can have it and be ready to go. And then we'll post it then, too. So it's a really cute little um, little lovey with a little animal head. Super fun. A great baby project that has been asked for a few times. So I'm looking forward to, to showing you guys how to do that one. All right. Is that all I have to tell him? I think we're good. I, I, I want to reiterate that the, today she is going to work on the notes, the show notes for this. And it's mm -hmm. going to be, again, it's going to be available over at Shannon Fabrics Top blog about this episode. Mm -hmm. There was so much information in this episode yes. and the critical yes. parts will be captured in a, in a handout that you can download and print Yes. and save for later so yes. that you can reference all exactly of this. and we'll do that every week so we'll have a reference sheet for you every week that'll talk about the important things so that you can go back and look for it and be like which which binding did she talk about and i'll tell you again in the handout what it is so make sure that you follow the blog if you subscribe to that you'll get that information right away also if you sign up for the newsletter you'll get that information and you'll be entered to win the national quilting month giveaway so make sure that you do that for sure you can join us. We'll be back next week, next Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon here, and 1 p.m. Eastern. And we'll be back with another project. Okay?